Riley here from NN Opal. If you have never cut an opal before, then this is a video for you. Over the next few days, we're going to put together a series of videos teaching you exactly how to do it. We're going to use Andamooka Matrix Opal for this series. Uh, Andamooka Matrix Opal is the best opal that I've found for teaching beginners how to cut opal. It's incredibly forgiving. We're going to cover how to cut it by hand uh, if you don't have any machinery and also how to cut it with an arbor if you do. Uh, we'll also touch on dopping, which is putting the stone up on a sticks with a special wax, and the heat treating process, which darkens the matrix background in order to make the opal color pop out a bit more. If you like our videos and want to see more, please give us a like and ring the little bell so you'll get notified when we put new videos up. Thanks! Let's get started. This is a drawing I call The Anatomy of an Oat. And most opals are pretty much like this. You got some potch on the bottom and then um, non opal stuff and then a colour bar of opal, probably in like the middle, and then some potchy sandy stuff on the top. So the object of the opal cutter is to have a dome where that colour bar is. Um, and if possible to leave a bit of potch on the bottom so that the colours shine extra brightly on top. Andamooka opal is great for beginners because the colour bars are so thick. Sometimes it can even run from top to bottom, straight through. This is a picture I drew of the general process of cutting an Andamooka opal. First, you get an Andamooka, piece of Andamooka rough opal and you um, get a template or a circle and draw the shape you want it to be around the opal with a pen or pencil and then cut it out either by hand or with an arbor until it looks something like this. Then take off the edges and then polish it up, do the back and you've got a perfect cabochon. Something like that. Easy. <laughs> In this first video, we're going to teach you how to cut Andamooka Matrix Opal by hand. Um, most of the things you need you can get from a local hardware store or a lapidary supplier. Here's a list of the things you'll need. I want to show you just how easy it is to cut an opal by hand. Um, this is a piece of Andamooka Matrix Opal. Um, and for a beginner, this is about the easiest kind of opal to cut. It's not much to look at right now, and this is a very inexpensive piece of matrix opal. Once you have it in place, just draw yourself a nice line all the way around. All right, easy. Step one is done. Our opal is going to be right here means we have to take away all of this stuff, all of this stuff, and all of that stuff. So we start with some 80 grit sandpaper and we get it wet and we start rubbing the opal against that 80 grit sandpaper um, to remove those areas that are not part of our stone. So whatever you're cutting by hand, this first part is definitely the hardest part. Uh, this is about an hour of, of just grinding on the sandpaper to get to this point. Um, but I'm getting pretty close to the line now, so I'll probably redo that line again and then do the, do the last bit a bit slower and be a bit more careful about it. Little bit by little bit, you can see that corner is starting to come off. Right now, I'm just trying to take the sharp edge off. So once you get to this point where your shape is pretty much the, the oval shape that you're looking for, and you've knocked this top corner off all the way around, 
all of the angles that you're going to need to cut after that are going to be um, pretty sharp angles so you need to put it on a daub stick and this is a daub stick it's a stick with a bit of wax on the end of it so put that here a bit of wax here on the end of it and this is the green wax this is my favorite kind of wax uh, it works best in all temperatures um, whenever it gets cold some of the other waxes will drop the stones this wax will pretty much work all year round so I try to tend to use this wax in the shop at this point we need to put the stone on the stick because we're going to be cutting um, the dome up here and if you cut the dome with your fingers your fingers will disappear your fingernails will disappear. So. Start to shape that wax into a little cone. Now this wax melts at about 70 degrees, but you don't have to get the stone that hot. It just needs to be dry. And stick the stone on. This part. You push that wax into a little cone around the stick. Once you do that, you dunk it in some water. You can start to spin it around. You want to make sure that it spins nice and even. Just like this. You can get your sandpaper back in action here. And now you can start to do the dome because you have a stick. And so instead of tilting it with your fingers, you can actually tilt it with the stick like this. See how I'm just tilting it slightly? So when I'm rocking it, I'm like rocking it like this and like this and like this and like this. So I, as I as I pull it, I change the direction of that stick in the air, right? So that it creates a, a dome. Slowly. Yeah, the dome is slowly starting to form. proud up in here right here what you need to do is focus and make sure that at this stage the cut is absolutely perfect so I'll do this a couple more times I'll make sure it's perfect and I'll keep on doming it over and once I'm convinced that the shape is perfect then we'll start using the other grits of sanding paper to start taking all the scratches out and start polishing it. And so for this last part of the process while we're cutting and before the polishing starts, you want to get rid there's one right there. You see that that little that little line there? So I've got to take that line and put it against the sandpaper back and forth, back and forth until that line is no longer a line. It's just a, a nice even dome all the way, all the way from the top and all the way down to the bottom. It still needs a little bit of work there. And so I'll take that little line, put it right in the middle there. All right, so this is where the cutting part of the process ends and the polishing part of the process begins. We start out with 100 grit sandpaper here and the object is to just keep the stone moving all around in different angles to take off all of the scratches from the 80 grit sandpaper. Alright, so once you've been hitting it with the 100 grit for a while, you need to check and see um, how you're doing in terms of the scratches. Now you can't do this wet, so I, I always, this is even when I'm cutting with a machine, I always have a, you know, a tea towel over my shoulder or a piece of cloth or something that's absorbent. Um, so once it's dry, then you can see if there's any scratches really easy. Um, so I've got a little bit of scratching on the side and I've got a little scratching on the face. Um, but all in all pretty good so far so we'll take it back we'll rub it on the 100 grit a little bit more and then 
we'll move on to the 180. So I got a nice little strip of 180 grit, just like with all of this. Get it nice and wet so you don't have any dust. Put it on your soft surface and start taking out the scratches from the 100 grit stone. Now there's a rough corner still here and before we treat the matrix we need to pop it off the stick and then take that corner off. Slide it up underneath the back like this. You can also just put it in the freezer for 10 minutes and it'll fall off easily. Pop off like that. And you can just clean the, clean the wax off with your knife. At this point I would get my 80 grit sandpaper back out this, get it wet again, give it back a nice flat rub. You just want to make sure there's no wax on the bottom of the stone before you start the treatment process. And just remember the front of this stone is polished or it's almost polished now. There's no grit in it so make sure not to touch the front of the stone to the sandpaper. Alright, so now the last part is to take this edge that goes all the way around it. And you don't want that edge to be there because it could um, um, make it really hard to set the stone in any kind of bezel setting to having an edge like there. So you just want to go all the way around the stone, keeping that edge at a 45 degree angle and just take that edge off. And once you have that edge taken off, I usually go back and get out some 100 grit or similar. Uh, just um, straighten it up a bit because that 80 grit is pretty main stuff. Uh, leaves it leaves a really nasty looking edge. Okay, remembering, not touching any of the polished surface, just touching the corner or the back. All right. So before he goes into treatment, this is uh, this is what it should look like. You see that. Bottom edge has been taken off. It's not very sharp anymore. There's no wax or anything on the bottom. It's not polished. The top has got a, got a very dull polish on it. You don't want it too polished. You want those pores nice and open so that whenever we put it in the treatment that it'll soak that sugar up. If you polish it too much, it won't, uh, it won't treat. Mm -hmm. video we're going to teach you how to cut Andamooka matrix opal on a lapidary arbor like we do. Cutting by hand a piece will take you a few hours but on an arbor it should only take about 10 or 15 minutes. We use a Loratone six wheel lapidary arbor. Let's get cutting. The first step is to get your template and mark where you want your opal to be. Tip for new players, use a mechanical pencil to get nice, accurate lines. Now we start with the 100 grit to take away anything that's outside your line. Notice here when I'm cutting the shape out, I'm angling it just slightly 
so that the cut line doesn't go beneath the drawn line. It's just flared out at the bottom slightly. the exact same process with these next two, maybe we'll speed it up just a little bit. Just essentially cutting off everything that's outside the line, making sure that the cut doesn't go beneath the line. Fire. Grab them with some tweezers. Make sure that the right side is facing up. Warm that up just to the part where it starts to steam. Don't get it any hotter than that. You don't want it boiling, you just want it warm enough to be nice and mounted. There on the end of the stick. And you put your stone over the fire. Topping wax will not stick to a stone that is wet. Some people do this dry, but if you do it from when it's wet, you can see when it evaporates. Three or four seconds later, that's going to be about 70 degrees. Warm the wax up, flip the stone over. Now with a damp finger you just want to press around the side of the wax there so that as much of that wax touches the stone as you possibly can. You want a nice little cone running from the stone all the way up to, you know, a quarter of an inch or a few millimeters above the stick. And you dump it in some, dunk it in some water and uh, spin it around and make sure that it's even whenever it spins. It'll help you get a perfect dome on it. not quite right you can put it back in the flame um, and warm it up just a little bit and keep playing with it until it's perfect. Now here's a close-up of me daubing one of the stones. I like with these big stones I like to get them wet and then uh, once they're wet I can watch the water evaporate off of the top of them. Now once the, on a big stone like this one once the water is gone the top of the stone is about 65 degrees and the bottom of the stone is about 70 or 75 degrees, which is just the perfect temperature to melt the green wax. Now we're at about 3, 2, 1. Now the stone is the perfect temperature to put the green daubing wax on it. Now once the opals are on their sticks, this is where we start to get the rough shape of the cabochon. So I'll use my 100 grit wheel on the arbor to take off that to take off that corner and to just start to get the dome formed before I, I move it on to the finer wheel. The stone that I'm cutting here is all treated and a matrix so you can see as I start to cut it the darker color starts to come off of the stone. That's why it needs to be retreated. And sometimes even my stones fall off, especially on this rough 100 grit wheel. The friction with this wheel vibrates the stone um, pretty hard, so sometimes they'll jump off when you're sh doing the initial shaping and you just have to re them. Once we have the rough shapes done, we move over to the 230 grit centered wheel to refine the shapes.
taking up the facets, or little ridges, that form on the shoulder, between the dome and the sides of the opal. For the first seven or eight years I had this harbor, I was cutting with uh, electroplated diamond wheels. Um, and whenever I started cutting opals for a living instead of just for a hobby, my electroplated wheel uh, started to, to wear out, so I decided to invest in some uh, diamond-centered wheels. And I tell you, I always thought they were pretty much the same thing, but the difference between cutting on a wheel that is electroplated and a wheel that's diamond-centered is, is chalk and cheese. This wheel is one of the best things that's ever happened to me. It's uh, five millimeters of steel that's been impregnated with diamond grit and it, uh, they're, they're more expensive, they're three or four times more expensive but um, the cut that you get on them is just so absolutely clean. Um, it, it just makes it makes uh, something that used to be really hard into something that's just an absolute joy. Now the cutting is all done, we start with the 280 grit Nova wheel to start the polishing process. Always spinning, always moving, we're just trying to take out the scratches from the previous wheels here. Check out the red flash on this stone. It's so bright that you can see it in the reflection of the water on the wheel. And now we move up to a quick polish on the 600 grit Nova wheel. Now for Andamooka matrix stones that we're going to treat, 600 is as high as we go. Um, this is the point where we need to take the stones off, do the backs of them, um, and then do the treatment process. In 10 minutes in the freezer, we'll pop those stones off the sticks easily. Now once we pull them out of the freezer, we just dip them in the water, and give them a second to warm up, and they'll just pop off. Now before we treat these stones, it's really important to clean up the backs of them. We clean up the very back and make sure there's no wax on them. And we also clean up the bottom corner to make sure that it's rounded off. Uh, this will help make sure that there's no chipping at any point with the stone. Now once you've cleaned the back and taken the bottom corner off, these stones are now ready for the treatment process, which is going to darken the matrix and make the opal really stand out. In this next video, we're going to teach you how to treat Andamooka matrix rough with heat because you can do it with heat or acid, but acid's really dangerous for little kids as well. Ah! So we're going to do it by heat. Alright. Right, so here are the four stones of Andamooka matrix opal. Now these are untreated now um, because I've rubbed them. Um, this is the one that I cut by hand, right, entirely by hand. 
And I got to tell you, the hardest part of this process was not jumping up and putting on on the arbor and cutting it with the machine. <laughs> so I cut this entire thing and polished the entire thing by hand, which I haven't done in a while and it gives me a respect for the old days whenever I used to do that by hand all the time. These other three are have all been cut entirely by machine um, and we've gone over that process and, and in one of the other videos. Now we're going to show you how to treat and remove matrix opal. The first step is to soak it in hot sugar water and then cook it in an oven. Now we're going to show you how to make the sugar water. Get some brown sugar and a jar and put fill it about half full with brown sugar. It doesn't matter if you touch it with fingers or a spoon, it's not going to be is this the easiest recipe in the world? Yep, mm -hmm. yeah. definitely. Pretty much. Half sugar, half water. Good. And now you fill the other half with water. And there we go. The hand cut one. And this one. Cut by machine. This one. Machine cut. And this one. You want to stir that up until it gets dissolved. Here, that's safe. <laughs> now that you've got your opals in the solution and it's pretty much dissolved, put the cap on the jar and put it in a crock pot on high heat for about 12 hours. Now it's probably not a good idea to put the um, glass jar straight on the bottom of the crock pot so we got a little um, cloth here and we put it on the bottom and then rest the jar on top of it so it doesn't go exactly. There we go, set it in there nice and gentle. You want to make sure that overnight your crock pot doesn't run out of water so before you go to bed or leave it alone Make sure to put water in there about two thirds the way up so that um, the glass doesn't shatter. You want to make sure that your crock box heat is on high um, because you want the sugar water to be really hot but not hot enough to boil. So make sure it's not on low. After 12 hours, pour your stones out of the crock pot and sugar solution and put them on like a paper towel toilet paper just don't touch them with your hands because one it might be hot and two you don't want any foreign matters or stuff getting on the stones okay now we're gonna just take them out and get like a pair of tweezers or something and just push it around in there until you can Find them. Got this one, I think. Oh, yes, I got it. And there are four stones. Now I'm going to dry these stones off, but making sure not to touch them with my bare hands because it might get grease and oil and stuff on them, and you don't want that. You need to get one square piece of foil for every stone you have. Pull it out. Now that you've got your foil and your opals, um, you want, with a pair of tweezers, still don't touch them, to put one opal per piece of foil and just put it down at the end and then wrap it over to about. So about halfway. And then fold in the sides and then roll up the rest of the way and then just squish it together really tightly in your hand because you don't want any air bubbles in there. So it should look like something like that when you're finished. And just do that with all your stones. The number one complaint that I hear when 
people are trying to heat treat and move the matrix is that the stones will crack. And the reason that we wrap them up in a foil like this is to make sure that they don't get too hot or too cold quickly. It's just like glass. They don't handle thermal shock very well. Now you've got all your opals individually wrapped, put them all into a couple more pieces of foil and wrap them up into one big ball. And then just do that a few times. First thing you do is put your ball of stones in a cold oven. Just sit them on in the middle on a tray rack or something. Like just. Now turn your oven up to 250 degrees Celsius and about 480 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you're going to cook your stones for about four hours. Fair warning. It gets pretty smoky when the sugar carbonates, so make sure to turn on your ventilation system and maybe open some windows. After four hours, turn your oven off and let it cool for a few hours. After a few hours, when the stones have cooled naturally, you can open them up and see what the results are. This is the before and this is the after. They're very dark right now, but they'll lighten up as soon as we do the final polish. Alright, in the last video in this series, we're, the Anamuka Matrix Opal has been treated and we're going to show you how we polish it. Now, you can polish it by hand or you can polish it with an arbor. We're going to teach you how to do both of them in this video. And we're probably going to start out with the hand polishing. Now, when you're polishing on the machine, you don't necessarily have to have a stick. You can do it just using your hands, but uh, for the purpose of this video, we'll put them all up on sticks and do it that way. If you time it just right, your stone will be the perfect temperature right as your wax is ready to go. This is the hand cut stone, entirely hand cut this one. I'm going to start it off with a bit of 400 grit. It's really important to have a the soft material down below so that you don't cut into the stone. You don't want to do any cutting here. This is just taking off the, essentially the carbonized sugar out of that last fraction of a millimeter so that the opal can shine through. This is a bit of 800. Always wet. This is the 
what it looks like the last stage before you do the final polish, which is with cerium oxide. Now for this very last part of the process, we just get a little strip of leather. Get it nice and wet. Once it's nice and wet, you add um, just the smallest amount of cerium oxide. And this just puts a really nice high polish on the final product here. Now you just do this motion for a few minutes and make sure that you get all the bits of the stone. Now we'll do the rest of these really quickly on the arbor, starting with the 600 grip wheel. And now on the 1300 grip wheel. And on the 3000 in super slow motion. And now we finish off the final polishing with a slurry of cerium oxide on a felt wheel. The very last step of this process is just taking the sticks and put them in the freezer for about 10 minutes. And as soon as they come out, we get them in the sun. And the difference in temperature between the cold stone and the warm sunshine will pop these off. The trick is not to do it immediately. You want them to warm up just a little bit. And they just pop off like that. Pop off. Once they've come off, just take my safety razor. Make sure there's no wax there on the bottom. Sometimes there'll be just a little bit left. And here they are, the four final stones. The first one completely cut and polished by hand. This last one has to be my favorite. Thanks so much for watching our series on beginners Cutting and treating Andamooka Matrix Opal. We would love to keep making videos for you. So please give us a like and ring the little bell to keep the new videos coming. And if you have any questions, please give us a comment. Until later, happy cutting.